In the name of Jesus. I want you to return to your seats. I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes today. For all of our guests who are here, I'll introduce myself. I'm Michael Enzi, pastor of Christian Life Center. And we are so thrilled, so honored to be hosting the Jesus Tent Revival with Dr. Brayden Anderson, Sister Kendra, their beautiful daughters and son, Judah, who are here to help us this week. Would you give it up for Dr. Anderson, his family? And we'll hear from him again this evening, 7 o'clock tonight. The Jesus Tent Revival will continue right here. And you got to tell somebody about it this afternoon. Bring them back with you tonight. I do have to make a quick announcement. We've adjusted our teardown schedule just a little bit. So tomorrow morning at 1030, we're going to be tearing down the tent and they're going to be moving on to their next revival over in Kentucky and then on to Indiana. So we need some help in the morning. Some of our teardown crew were prepared to help in the evening. So if you're available 1030 in the morning, you can take an early lunch break. Come help us. Is there anybody that would say I could be here at 1030? Got any men, strong men that would wave at me right now? I got a few hands going up that would say I can be here at 1030 in the morning. Thank you. For that, to talk to some other strong men and tell them we, we need some help in the morning. I don't even want to think about tearing this thing down, but while it's still here, God's still moving in this tent. He's still working and ministering, and I'm so thankful for that today. It is an honor for us to, to have you joining with us today, to all of our guests who are here in part of this service and our church family. It's just a beautiful thing to see what God is doing here in Heath, Newark, throughout Licking County, throughout Central Ohio. The Spirit of God is moving in a very, very special way. And if you're looking for a church to make your home, I, I want to encourage you. Christian Life Center is a great church, a loving church family. And we just love to come alongside people to join you on your journey of discipleship with Jesus Christ. And we'd love to be part of that journey today. Today is August the 11th, 2024, and one month from today will mark the 23rd anniversary of one of the most horrific days in the history of the United States of America. On Tuesday, September the 11th, 2001, 19 Al-Qaeda-funded terrorists hijacked four commercial planes scheduled to travel from the East Coast to California. Two of the planes were crashed into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, representing capitalism and the economic strength of our country. The other two planes were aimed toward Washington, D.C. One crashed into the Pentagon, the headquarters of the U.S. Department of Defense, representing our military strength. The other was believed to be headed for the U.S. Capitol, representing the strength of our democracy. It crashed in rural Pennsylvania due to the heroic efforts of passengers who were able to make contact with family members and were made aware of the unfolding tragedy below and overwhelmed the terrorists, bringing the plane to the ground. This coordinated attack against our country killed 2,977 people that day, making it the deadliest terrorist attack in history. If you're old enough to remember that day, you no doubt remember right where you were and what you were doing when you heard the news as we watched the unfolding tragedy in real time on national television. In the midst of all the heartbreaking stories of lost lives were several testimonies of miraculous survival. One such story came to be known as the miracle of Stairway B. Jay Jonas, captain of Ladder Company 6 of the New York Fire Department, was leading his team up into the North Tower of the World Trade Center, helping people evacuate. They were on the 27th floor of the North Tower when they felt a sudden tremor and then what followed, something that felt like an earthquake. They soon realized that the South Tower had just collapsed, which was struck by a plane after the North Tower was struck by a plane that they were in. Captain Jonas gave the command for his team to begin to evacuate. When they reached the 22nd floor, they came across a woman by the name of Josephine Harris. She was wounded and she was worn out, having already descended 50 flights of stairs. She didn't think she could go any further, but they encouraged her on half carrying her down the stairs. When they reached the fourth floor landing, Josephine crying begged for a break. And so they stopped and they rested for a moment. It was a moment in time that saved their lives. There on the fourth floor landing, they heard a rumble and then the realization that the North Tower was also collapsing. 
It only took about eight seconds, but it seemed like an eternity to them. They could hear the concrete slab of one floor hitting the one below it, 110 floors crashing down in rapid succession, a thunderous cacophony of terror until everything went completely dark and there was complete silence. And they realized that they were somehow miraculously still alive. 12 firefighters, one police officer, and Josephine Harris. Preserved in a small cocoon of safety on the the fourth floor landing of Stairway B in the North Tower. But they were trapped. There was total darkness and there was no way out. Surrounded by massive slabs of broken concrete and twisted steel. Firefighter John Morbido, who had just barely made it out of the tower safely before the collapse, looked across the horrific landscape. Fires raging, broken concrete, rebar, the twisted steel frame of the building, pieces of the facade still standing. He said, there is no way that there are any survivors. The first responders who survived the collapse assembled to attempt to rescue any survivors multiple times they ventured out onto the debris field only to be called back because it would start to shift and collapse and meanwhile captain jonas with his small group of survivors were able to find a working radio and they began calling out mayday mayday ladder company six in stairway b of the north tower mayday mayday over and over they would call out until finally the new york fire department operations command center received their transmission from deep within the rubble and began a frantic effort to find them in the midst of all that chaos. Cliff Staffner was a friend of Captain Jonas and he was on one of the rescue teams that was leading the effort to find them. And he would check in every few minutes with Captain Jonas. and He would say rescue three to ladder six. Are you okay? Are you still with us? And they would get that affirmative response and he would end every transmission by saying I'm coming for you brother. I'm coming for you. Every few minutes he would call back in. It's rescue three to ladder six. Are you okay? Are you still with us? And when they would ring back with that affirmative, yes, we're still here. We're waiting for you. And there Cliff would call back to him. I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you. After three or four hours of trying frantically to find them searching, the dust began to settle a bit and the survivors saw a flicker of light above them. They realized that the sun was starting to shine through. There was a small hole above them and a beam of light, a ray of hope. There was an opening there where there had been 106 floors of the North Tower of the World Trade Center above them. Now they could see just a little bit of blue sky about 20 feet above them. And so they started to climb and they climbed to that hole and they made their way to the edge of that hole where they could look out and all they could see was rubble the facade of that world trade center other surrounding buildings on fire and then they saw a rescue team off in the distance and they started to cry out to them and to call out to that rescue team come save us over here we're over here would you come and rescue us and the firemen made their way over to them pulled them out carrying them to safety all All 14 of them, 12 firemen, a police officer, and Josephine Harris made their way to safety. The miracle of stairway B. Because somebody made a declaration. I'm coming for you, brother. If you'll just hold on just a little bit longer. I'm coming for you, brother. I know it looks impossible right now. I know it looks bleak. I know it looks like you're you're surrounded by chaos and confusion and debris but I'm coming for you brother I'm coming for you this miraculous rescue 
reminds me of the gospel story. It reminds me of the gospel that we see in scripture. The writer of Hebrews shares this message with us in in chapter 2 verse 9. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, and crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. Since therefore the children, speaking of us and our Savior Jesus Christ, share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same thing, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect. He was fully human so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make payment for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. I'm glad to tell you today that we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, mediator between God and man. That man, Christ Jesus, who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted at all points like as we are yet without sin. Therefore, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Here's what the writer of Hebrews was saying. The creator of the universe took on human flesh just like you and I have. He he was hungry. He was thirsty. He tasted pain and he tasted death. He was beaten. There were stripes upon his back. He was nailed to a cruel cross and he died there from suffocation on that cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and three days later he rose again from the grave so that you and I could understand that we can come out of that grave the rubble of sin the debris of our past that we can come out of our shame and guilt you know what Jesus was saying when he arrived on the scene I'm coming for you brother I'm coming for you I know you're lost I know you're hopeless I know you're ashamed I know you're carrying condemnation and guilt but I'm coming for you brother if you'll hang on just a little bit longer. There's a ray of hope. There's the light of the glorious gospel that says there's hope. There's hope. I know you're buried beneath 106 floors of condemnation and guilt but there's a ray of hope that says there's a rescuer and his name is Jesus. There's a savior and his name is Jesus. Isaiah would declare, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. It's it's such an unfair thing when I consider the gospel. It doesn't really make any sense to me. We sinned and he was punished. He received chastisement. He was mocked and cursed and spit upon. But we get peace. He got stripes on his back. But we get healing. I've got a message for you today. Every individual who is here under this tent. That Jesus loved you enough that he thought you were worth dying for. That Jesus loved you enough that he thought you were worth saving. He made you in his image and and he made you with purpose. He created you with destiny. He created you with a future. I don't care what the enemy is trying to tell you. Everything that the devil says is a lie. Every word that comes out of his mouth, he is the accuser of the brethren. And he is a liar and the father of lies. And everything that he's told you is a lie. 
If the devil's told you you're a loser, you ought to celebrate today because he's a liar. That means you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. If the devil's lied to you and told you that you're not worth anything, you ought to stand and celebrate and thank God because the devil is a liar. That means you have worth and you have value. Not because of your performance, but because of your position. Not because of anything that you've done, but because you're a child of God. He made you. He created you. He's got purpose for you. I want you to stand with me today. Everybody that has an Envision shirt on, I want you to come up here and join me on the platform. If you've got an Envision shirt on, come on up here. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. You got an Envision shirt. This was not coordinated. This was not planned. They have no idea what's going on. If you got an Envision shirt, come on, come, come stand. Come up here on the platform. You got an Envision shirt, come stand on the platform. Come on, come on, come on. This was not coordinated. I want you all to turn around. Turn around. That's the message that Jesus wants you to hear today. Because you're worth it. Because you're worth it. That's why he died for you. Because you're worth it. That's why he loves you so much. Because you're worth it. That's why he wants to heal you. That's why he wants to save you. That's why he wants to deliver you. Because you're worth it. You're worth it. He loves you. He cares about you. He doesn't want to leave you in your sin. He doesn't want to leave you in your shame. He doesn't want to leave you in your depression. He doesn't want to leave you in your pain and your brokenness. He wants to wrap his arms around you and let you know he loves you loves you because you're worth it. That's why Jesus showed up this Sunday morning under the tent because he wants you to know you're worthy of my love because he says you are. You're worth his forgiveness because he says you are. Oh, 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 oh. oh I feel the love of Jesus flowing through this sanctuary. Thank you. Y'all can go down. Thank you for your help. I feel the love of Jesus flowing through this sanctuary today. The Spirit of God is saying, I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you, sister. God knows where you are. He knows your name. He knows what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're facing, where you are, what you're going through right now. And he's saying, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. All you got to do is cry out to me and let, and let me know that you want to be rescued. Let me know that you want me to pull you out of that rubble of condemnation and shame. All of that debris of depression and addiction. Jesus wants to pull you out of it. You just got to receive it. There's two sides to this forgiveness thing. There's the forgiveness that we receive from Jesus, but there's also the forgiveness that we give. You, you, may have to, you may have to forgive somebody who hurt you, somebody who rejected you, somebody who disappointed you. You may have to forgive them in order to receive the forgiveness of, of Jesus. And that lack of forgiveness in your heart um, may be standing between you and the forgiveness that Jesus wants to give you. You might even have to forgive yourself. Jesus said, if you don't forgive others, then my Father in heaven cannot forgive you. I think within that others is also included yourself. Because a lack of forgiveness for yourself can stand between you and receiving the forgiveness that Jesus wants you to receive today. He's worthy of it all today. You've got to give it all. You've got to surrender it all. You've got to give it all to Him. You've got to empty it out all to Jesus. If somebody hurt you, abandoned you, abused you, rejected you, I want you to know that God can fill the void of that brokenness. That Jesus today, He wants to fill that place where there has been pain. He wants to fill it with love. If there's uncertainty today, if there's confusion, if it's just depression and anxiety that you have, you have been battling maybe for so long, maybe it feels like 106 floors worth are just laying on top of you right now. And you want liberty and freedom. You want to be set free. 
from that, Jesus is here to let you know that he came to rescue you. I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you, sister. I'm looking over this congregation today. Whether you're a member of CLC, you're a guest today. Jesus is saying, I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you, sister. Is there anybody that would, would say, I'll cry out to him and let him know I need something today. I'll lift my voice. I want to open these altars right now to anybody that would like to just step out from where you are and lift your hands and lift your voice and, and just say, Jesus, over here. Jesus, I need you right here. God, I'm carrying some things today. There's a weight. There's some pain. There's a burden that I brought with me today. There's some uncertainty, anxiety, depression, shame, guilt, condemnation, whatever it may be today. Jesus wants to take care of it. If you want to be water baptized in Jesus' name, the baptistry is ready today. If you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's available today. If you need healing, if you need deliverance, it's available today. Just step out from where you are right now and just make your way down here and lift your hands toward heaven. Open your mouth and say, Jesus, rescue me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. I can't save myself. I can't get myself out of this mess that I'm in. I can't dig my way out of the rubble that I'm in, Jesus. I need you to save me. I need, come on, prayer team, altar team, I want you to help us right now. I want you to just begin to pray. Begin to minister right now. You sacrificed your life so I could be free. I could be whole. Tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving You came You thought I was worth keeping on You cleaned me up inside To die for You sacrificed your life So I could be free Thank you. 